Well, welcome everybody to another exciting class. This one's gonna be about how to begin investing in real estate, something that uh, I have done for many years, buying single family homes. I've fixed them up, I've sold them, I've rented them. And we're gonna talk a little bit today about giving you the tools, the resources, uh, by which to talk to your existing clients. who Currently, they own single family residences. You guys have helped them buy or sell single family. They're familiar with it. They know how to maintain it. Um, and we're gonna be talking more today about what tools, what resources do they have to become an investor in real estate uh, in this higher interest rate environment. So, Tony Marino is bringing us this uh, session from First Centennial Mortgage. I'm Glenn Marino. I'm the business development manager at First Centennial. A little bit about Tony. Uh, he is the branch manager at the Marino team in Naperville. Uh, Tony is a loan originator. He's licensed not only in Illinois, but in Colorado and Florida. So again, if you any realtors have clients that are thinking of uh, retiring, moving to Florida, moving to Colorado, Tony would also be the person that can help get them pre-approved and financing in those states. Uh, he specializes in getting people into home ownership using down payment assistance. As many of you know, Illinois has that IDA program and uh, the most recent program is a $10,000 um, zero interest loan that has no zero, no monthly payments until the person sells the home 10, 15, 20 years down the road. So again, if you need, uh, anybody needs down payment assistance, any of your clients need down payment assistance, by all means, contact Tony. And he uses education to help people understand how they can become homeowners and own a part of the American dream. So here's some key facts as we get in today's class. Home ownership is still the American dream. However, buying a home has been the hardest hit with the recent rise in interest rates. The higher interest rates has led to higher mortgage payments. People who are currently sitting on two and 3% mortgages don't want to sell. That has reduced the inventory for the realtors to resell in the marketplace. Nobody wants to go from 3% interest to 6% interest or 7% interest, depending on their credit score. And all of a sudden they have twice as much interest to pay. It's not, it's not something that they would care to do. So the changing interest rate environment has been has had a dampening in affordability, meaning that uh, you know, might've qualified, clients may have qualified at a 3% interest rate, but at a six or 7%, they may not qualify for the same size house, or they have to start setting their goal, their sights on a smaller home. And it's also had a, a dampening in the demand to buy a single family home. Fewer people are in the pool that can afford to pay interest at six and 7%. Some other key facts, the mortgage rates have remained high after peaking in November of 22, they were as high as 7.08%. The average 30 year mortgage rates in the, in the US dropped to 6.09 in February of 2023, just a couple of months ago. And it has been up and down since then. And currently it's standing at 6.67% as of late June, 2023. So higher mortgage rates make borrowing more costly, which dampens the housing market activity. So again, how can we, how can you as realtors spark more activity for yourself, you know, thus getting more commissions? And even some potential homeowners may delay the home purchasing plan because of the higher interest rates, thinking, okay, let's go through the recession, uh, the rates will start to come down, and I'll come back into the marketplace because I can afford the house that I, I would, I'm dreaming of. So they might be delaying their purchasing plans for a year or two and just decide to rent. Some more key facts with the rise in interest and the dampening of demand, average home prices began to decline. Well, according to CoreLogic, there was the seven, the following seven consecutive months of decline in home values took place right in here toward the fourth quarter of 22 and into the beginning, all these red lines into the beginning of 23. Home prices, however, began to increase again in February, 2023. So what does that mean? That means that a lot of your current clients are sitting on increased 
equity, whatever they bought the house at, it's probably worth more in value today than it was when they bought it. So after a modest seven month correction, homeowners have seen more than a 40% increase in home values over the past two years. So again, if you've been a realtor for the past two years and you're, you've got clients that you put them into single family homes, they're sitting on equity that has gone up some 40% in the last two years. What that brings to my mind is that these people could possibly use the equity to take out a home equity line of credit. Home equity lines of credit have zero closing costs and they can use that home equity line of, remember the line of credit only costs them money when they use the line of credit. So they could use the home equity line of credit as their down payment if they don't have it in a savings account, they could use the home equity lender as the down payment for what we're gonna talk about here as, as an investment property. So what are the real estate opportunities that are available in today's marketplace? Higher interest rates, higher home prices. So maybe what we look at is a simple baby step strategy. How about if we buy a home? How about if we fix up the home? And how about if we sell it as an investment property in say a three to six month time frame, Your clients already know how to maintain a single family home as their primary residence, which means that if you're asking them to look at buying a single family and they live in a single family, they kind of know what it takes to maintain lawns and, and how to change light bulbs and that faucets leak and toilets leak. And they know how to do some rudimentary maintenance in a house. So there's gonna be less reluctance on their part if you said, well, why don't we look at a home that might need some fixing up? And what if you help them buy that single family for as little as 15% down? So it's not 20, it's not 25%, it's as little as 15% down on an investment property. And what if you help them get all the fix up funds for as little as 15% of the fix up costs? So let's just say if somebody was buying a hundred thousand dollar, I'm using easy numbers in our head here, they're buying a hundred thousand dollar home, 15% of that would be fifteen thousand dollars, would be their down payment. And if they're gonna put fifty thousand dollars as the fix up into that, they would only have to come up with 15% or seven thousand five hundred dollars would be their out of pocket. The rest of it would be all financed both the purchase and the fix up, all financed in an 85% loan. And what if you help them find a renter if they decided that, well, thanks for this strategy of selling, but you know what, I, I wanna, I'm, I'm okay. I, I, I like the mortgage payment and I think I can put a renter in there. What if you were the one who would help them get a renter? And what if you help them sell the property? They said, no, 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 I don't wanna be, I don't wanna maintain, I don't wanna be a landlord. I don't wanna be calling for, you know, uh, yeah, where's your rent check? I, I don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night because the faucet is leaking. So what if you help them sell the investment property once it's all fixed up? That's a lot of help. Buying, fixing, possibly renting. That means lots of commissions for you as, as a realtor. So what are the advantage of buying a single family investment property? Well, first off, the client's already familiar, as we talked about, with owning a single family home. So there's less reluctance to buying. You know, again, if I was a realtor, maybe what I'd be doing is I'd be looking in neighborhoods that I want to be a realtor in, and I might be looking for homes that need repair or they're dated and seeing if they're available for purchase. And then I'd be bringing it out to my customer base and getting on the phone and talking to them about this strategy that you, you know, I can, I, my team with Tony Murillo, I can help you buy this and fix it up all for 15% down. If selling after buying and fixing it up, say within three to six months, then you're, the customer is not as sensitive to higher rates. And if they, if you're, if you're being charged six and a half, seven percent in interest, and they're only holding that interest for three months to six months, they're not going to be as sensitive to it, especially when you show them the gain on the sale, the profit that they're going to make. They're saying, okay, 
the, the interest is part of my carrying costs. It's like my real estate tax. It's like my homeowner's insurance. I get to carry the real estate tax and the homeowners for three to six months. But the interest I'm only holding for three to six months, I, I, it's, not the, it's not that bad. It fills the demand need for more quality housing. Remember, not as many houses are on the market right now. The two to 3% interest rate people are not selling. So what you'd be doing is taking a house that's in need of repair and you'd be making it a quality home, putting more inventory on the market. Rising home prices builds equity, which builds wealth. So again, what are the advantages of buying a single family investment property? you're going to increase your wealth, your net worth. You're going to be building equity in your own personal net worth. They'll also get tax deductions, not only for the interest that they're paying and the real estate taxes that they're paying, but for any other type of maintenance expenses, advertising, um, any types of repairs, they're all going to be able to get tax deductions for this. And real estate owners have a 45% greater net worth than non-real estate owners. So once again, they're already familiar with a single family home. Now what you're gonna be doing is showing them why they could possibly be a real estate investor. So what are the three types of real estate? Well, there's primary residence that most of your clients have right now. Then there's a second home. And then there's the investment property. And we're talking about investment today. And to begin investing in real estate, we're suggesting, I'm suggesting that they start with a single family residence, be a condo, townhome, or a single family residence. If you limit your beginning investment to a single family residence, then you can use what's called the home style loan to buy it and fix it up all in one loan for a small down payment. Buy and fix all in one loan. A home style loan allows as little as a 15% down payment for the purchase and for the fix up costs. So buying an investment property doesn't have to be that challenging. It's a big step, but it doesn't have to be that challenging. So where does one get the 15% down payment? What if your client says, great idea, love the idea, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor. However, I'm just missing the 15%. Well, so what if you can help them with the 15% down payment? Well, if you help them, it's going to help that individual overcome the financial barrier to investing in real estate with you. The down payment can come from one, well, first off, if, from their savings account, if they have the funds. It can also, which I didn't put on here, it could come from their 401k account. They can take out loans from their 401k and the monthly payment on that does not affect their debt to income ratio when they're trying to qualify for this investment property loan. Another place where they can get the 15% down payment, we talked a little bit about the rise up in home values, where well, your client can use the equity in their primary residence. If they've owned it for the last two years, possibly it's gone up 40% in value, and they can get a home equity line of credit with no closing costs. Doesn't cost them anything. I, 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 if I had to be a betting man, I'd say some of your clients currently have home equity lines of credit. And remember, it didn't cost them anything to get it. Usually they go to their local bank where they have their checking account and that bank will give them a free home equity line of credit. And there's no interest charged until you use it. Well, we're gonna give them a reason to use whatever portion. If they, have, if they need 15%, but they've got 5% in savings toward this 15% down payment, then they only need the other 10% from the home equity. But if they need the whole 15%, depends on whether they have a $10,000, a $50,000, a $75,000 home equity line of credit, which could be used as the down payment. Well, the Marino team, through Tony Marino, he can provide them with access to the home equity line of credit market if they're in need of where do I go to get a zero cost home equity line of credit. So let's talk about the guidelines for the home style investor renovation loan. We're focusing on the last column here, the items in yellow. First off, it has to be a single family uh, purchase. It can't be a, a two, three, four unit. It's got to be single family, condo townhouse or single family. And it can be maximum 
loan to purchase price. There's mortgage insurance required because they're borrowing more than 80%. Uh, their minimum repairs, there are none. If they want to put $5,000 in, they want to put $50,000. Um, most recently, Tony was working with a customer that wanted $150,000 of improvements. And again, there is no minimum repair. The maximum is that you can't have more than 75% of the improvements improved value. So again, if, so, if something is worth after all the improvements are in a half a million dollars, 75% of that, I believe is about 400,000. Uh, that would be your maximum repair amount that you could be putting into the property. Now look at what can go into the loan amount, these items in yellow here. You get the hard costs of labor and material. So the whatever the bid is from the general contractor, you know, there's $50,000 worth of improvements. But let's just say that you had to use an architect because you were going to be moving some walls and you needed, you know, you needed some design work done in order to get it approved by, say, the local municipality. You can add in the architectural fees. Um, you're going to add in, and we're going to talk a little bit more later on about the consultant fee, the 203K consultant fee. Anytime you're doing improvements greater than 35000 or if you're doing structural repairs, say your foundation has a crack in it or you're moving a load bearing wall in the house, you wanna do an open floor concept in this house that you're buying and you're gonna be moving walls. Well, you're gonna need a consultant to come in and you can add in his costs into the loan amount. You will have up to five draws. Draws are times when the general contractor can request funds that you, the borrower has to approve. So the draw requests are like $125 each. There's five of them that are allowed. In addition to the sixth one, which is a final inspection fee, that can also be added into the loan amount such that the loan, the loan is paying for it and you, the customer, are not. Title updates, permit fees, contingency reserve, up to six months of PIT, up to six months of mortgage payments can also be put into the loan amount, but not on investment property. If this was Single family, owner occupied, yes, they have to vacate, they have to go rent uh, an apartment while this house is being rehabbed. They, they could take six months worth of mortgage payments, put them into the loan amount and have the loan amount pay the mortgage. And last but not least, the construction management fee is very similar to the 203K. So there's a lot of items that can go into the loan amount such that the customer is not out of pocket. And again, there's going to be a contingency. It says minimum of 10%. Contingency means, you know, when they all of a sudden go into a house and let's say they're going to knock out a, a, a structural wall, for example, um, they don't know what's behind it. And if all of a sudden there's, you know, an additional cost of moving that wall because they, they, they couldn't see it until they opened the wall, the contingency is there. So again, two, if it was a $200,000 repair, uh, rehab, 10% uh, would be $20,000. Always think of it as the customer will always have 10% of the overall repair cost in a contingency if they need it. If all of a sudden there's an unknown cost that springs up during the rehab, during the repair work, they've got a contingency equal to 10% of the overall cost. They have up to 12 months to finish the, uh, the construction or the rehab. There is no self-help, meaning that no matter if you guys, oh, you know, I'm really handy. I'm a great guy at doing fix-up. Nope. Borrowers cannot do self-help. They have to hire a general contractor. The very cool thing is that they can do structural repairs. That's not in every re, uh, renovation loan program, but in the home style, you can do structural. You can move walls interior. You can fix foundations. Absolutely structural repairs are, are allowed. You cannot do a teardown. You can't knock it down to its foundation and start over. Appliances, let's say you're going to, you know, you want to modernize the kitchen that uh, you're buying. Um, as long as it's included in the write up that the general contractor included it, it's in his bid, not a problem. You can do foundation work. When the repairs exceed $35,000 or they're structural, you're going to need to hire the FHA 203K consultant. You will need one general contractor. And if he does, if a specialty uh, work is needed, like asbestos removal, 
or mold removal, and the general contractor is not a specialist in it, he can hire specialists as needed for the job. We mentioned that there's gonna be five draws and one final inspection. And really the one, another cool thing at the very bottom here, 50% of the material costs on the initial draw, on the first draw, right after closing, they can get up to 50% of the materials. So if on a $200,000 repair job, if $50,000 was the materials, they can get 50%, they can get $25,000 day one, go to Home Depot, buy all the lumber, the nails, the mud, everything that they need in order to get going and start putting the improvements into the property. The loan size, you can go up to $726,200. I would think that everybody on this call is looking at it and going, that's more than enough funds for someone to do a buy, a fix up and sell. So again, 726,000, we're not gonna run into any real problems with the max loan amount being that high. So again, an overview, with the home style, you may purchase a property and include funds in the loan amount to cover the cost of repairs, remodeling, renovations, and energy improvements. The general parameters, there's no minimum dollar amount required for renovation. So is the minimum, you, know, you got $5,000, you can do, the, do this program for 5,000. Any type of renovation or repair is eligible if the improvements are permanently affixed to the real estate. The use of homestyle renovation to purchase appliances is permitted, again, as long as it's in the bid from the general contractor. Some more general parameters. Construction of various outdoor buildings and structures are permitted as long as they're also permitted under the local zoning ordinances. Some examples might be garage, get them a new garage, recreation rooms, sunrooms, swimming pools. You just can't do complete teardowns and reconstruction of the dwelling. And you can't do do it yourself or self-help is not allowed. And you must complete the renovations within 12 months. Let's talk a little bit about the role of the consultant. I use the consultant all the time, only because it makes the loan go through the lending process so much more smoothly. Uh, you'll be required if you'll you'll be required to have a consultant if your repairs are over thirty five thousand or you're doing structural. And what he's going to do is, you know, he's the consultant's going to meet with the borrower at the site. Okay, he's going to go out to the house, and typically the realtor's going to go too. And he does what's called a specification of repair. And again, we'll talk again down here. It says what a specification of repair includes. It includes the mandatory repairs. In other words, the consultant knows what the ordinances are for that specific, where that property is located. He knows what the lenders are also going to require. So he has two columns in his, re in his report. One is mandatory repairs. You must fix the uh, asbestos and remove it. You must take out the mold. You know, he's gonna give you all the required items in order for it to go through underwriting and get uh, final approval, certificate of occupancy from the village. At the same time, the customer is going to give what's called the desired repairs. Those are going to be items like, you know, I've got um, laminate countertops. I want granite. So now we're doing into the cosmetics. So he'll add all those items in the second column. First column is all the mandatory repairs. The second column is desired repairs. And then he's going to put that into a report where it's called a blank bit of repair. So now he's got this blank bit of repair and he, what he's gonna do is he's gonna give that to the borrower. He's gonna give that to the, um, uh, to the lender and he's gonna give it to the general contractor. And they're gonna say, general contractor, you've been chosen by the borrower. Fill out this blank bit of repair. What do you bid for materials and labor on the removal of mold? What do you bid on the, the removal of asbestos? What do you bid for the granite countertops? What do you bid for materials of labor on changing out the cabinetry in the kitchen? So the borrower pays the consultant fee by check at the time of the meeting when they initially go out and meet at the property. And I'll show you the consultant fee down below in a second. Remember, he's gonna have two columns in his report. And when you add up the, the, the totals for mandatory repairs and the total for desired repairs, that's the total cost of repairs. Now, 
That is not the bid. The consultant is saying he's really protecting the borrower against a bad guy consultant. If he says that the, the repair should cost 150,000, but then the blank bid package goes out to a general contractor and he comes back and says, well, it's 250,000. Well, somebody better question, why does the consultant think they can do the work for 150,000 and the general contractor says 250? He either didn't understand the scope of the work or he's taking advantage of the borrower. Either way, until, unless he revises that bid, he's not getting the job in my opinion. So the consultant delivers a report package to the borrower, to the lender and the contractor, and they let the contractor then fill out the blank bid form, which shows each item that he's going to do, each type of repair he's gonna do in the house and how much in materials it's gonna cost and how much in labor it's gonna cost. The consultant prepares, again, the, 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 the work write-up, the specification of repair report and the blank bid for all structural repair projects, as well as any project where the repairs are greater than 35,000. The contractor must bid on the SOR and fill out the blank bid of repair. And the home style loans allow a family member to actually be the, to, to be the project general contractor. So if Glenn was doing this and my brother was a general contractor, I could ask, ask my brother to be the general contractor. However, you'll see later on, but he must meet the requirements. He can't just be a guy with a toolbox. You'll see that he's, you know, what, what the requirements are in order to be an acceptable general contractor. If there is not a consultant, meaning that the repairs are under 35,000 and there's no structural moving of walls or no foundation work to be done, the contractor bid must be broken out between labor and material. I've seen them both. I've seen them where they've used the blank bid form. I've also seen where if there's no consultant, then they, you know, they just ask the contractor to break his bid out between material and labor. When the loan closes, all repair funds, say that $200,000 that we've been talking about, that's gonna be placed in an escrow and the title company will disperse it, but it's only gonna be dispersed after an inspection is done by the consultant. So if all of a sudden the general contractor says, oh, I finished the kitchen. I want to be paid for all the granite, all the cabinetry. Well, somebody's got to go out and inspect it. That the cabinets are in, the granite's in. So the contractor goes out and he will do an inspection, and then it goes to the borrower to approve it. Because again, the borrower is probably going to walk in the house and look and go, "Oh my God, this guy, these cabinets are hung. You know, they're not level, and the handles on the cabinets they're loose." So again to avoid any type of payout to a general contractor where the work is not done satisfactory, the borrower must ultimately approve these five draw requests for money. So the renovation begins, um, the general contractor may begin renovations once permits are issued by the local municipality. The con consultant, as I said, he performs draw request inspections. And again, and he's also gonna allow up to 50% of the materials that are needed to start the renovation and get it in draw number one, day one, go out, go to Home Depot, go get your materials, get started, here's the money. Here's a consultant's fee schedule. So again, uh, it can be as low as $400 to $1,000 or up to 1% of anything over 100,000. So the example is on a $150,000 repair cost, the consultant's fee would be $1,500. Let's talk about the general contractor. Again, remember my brother could show up as the general contractor or be allowed, but he's gotta meet certain requirements. So all renovation work must be performed by a licensed contractor, must be licensed or subcontractor unless the contractor licensing is not applicable in, you know, under the state that they're operating in or under local law. Self-help is not allowed. So again, borrower can't, can't uh, you know, is, is not allowed to be a, a tradesman. The lender must evidence the contractor was evaluated and able to perform the required duties. The contractor must meet the following criteria. First off, he must have three years experience as a contractor. So if my brother has only been six months out of trade school, he's not eligible. 
and he must have a, must have, be, have a minimum of one year in business. So again, um, if he was working for over four or five years as a carpenter for another company, and now he started his own company, he's been in business for two years, he's eligible to be my general contractor on my home style loan. He has to have all the appropriate credentials required by state and local government. He has to be financially able to perform the duties necessary to complete the renovation in a timely manner. And he agrees to indemnify the borrower for all property losses or damages that they cause to the property by its employees or by any of its subcontractors. So the contractor must complete what's called a satisfactory contractor profile report. It's known as form 1202 and Tony Marino would give that to the general contractor who's chosen by the borrower and ask that he fill it out. The contractor also must have insurance carrying a builder's all risk policy uh, that's not less than 100% of the replacement cost of the work. So if the work is 200,000, he has to have at least 200,000 of all risk insurance policy. And he has to have a general liability insurance policy with limits equal to at least 500,000. That if somebody is on a ladder uh, trying to do recessed lighting and they fall off the ladder to the floor and they break their back, the general contractor has to have general liability insurance. The validation of the contract, the lender must review all the documents that 1202 form to establish that he's qualified to complete the work on the, on the write-up and on that blank bid, which is no longer blank, they filled it out. The review must include their credentials, their work experience, and client references. The lender must also ensure that the contractor meets all jurisdictional licensing in the state and the bonding requirements. And the lender may not choose the contractor. We cannot give a referral to the borrower saying, hey, use Jack Jones, he's really a great contractor. It is up to the borrower to specify so that Someone doesn't come back to the lender and say, oh, well, you told us that Jack was a great guy. We will never say that. It's up to the borrower to find their contractor. General contractor, uh, the borrower always selects that general contractor we just talked about. The contractor does the sign up paperwork. All pages have to be completed on that 1202. He completes a resume and a profile. He, if he has any specialty certifications for mold, asbestos, well and septic, if that's part of the specifications of the job, he's going to have to show that he's a specialist in those areas. He's got to give us a W-9. He's got to give us his license as a general contractor and a certificate of liability insurance, minimum of $500,000 to a million dollars. Lead-based paint certificate is required on all homes built prior to 1978. And if mold or asbestos is present, mold remediation certification and asbestos certification is required. If the general contractor does not have that, he is entitled to hire someone with those certifications. The realtor tips. Realtors should set up appointments with the borrower and with the consultant, meaning that consultants going out, you should be a part of it. You should be right there to know what's going on. What does the consultant see? Because again, he's not just looking for to listen to the customer as to what the desired repairs are. Oh, I want that granite countertop. I want new cabinetry in the kitchen. He's looking for things that are going to be required in order to meet code requirements, such as mold or asbestos abatement. Um, realtor, you should also set appointments with the borrower and the contractor, getting him into the house, letting him walk around. He's got to fill out that bid, that blank bid form. He needs to understand what am I looking at? What kind of walls are we moving? Uh, you know, where's the electrical located? Um, if you're a buying agent, realtor, a tip for you is look for distressed properties. This is where you can all of a sudden, you know, you're looking for what to do. This is a great thing. Let's start looking in your neighborhoods for distressed properties that if they had 100,000, if they had $150,000 put in, they would be much more valuable and in line with other market homes in the area. And wouldn't it be a great idea to start calling your customer base and saying, I've got an opportunity for you. Would you like to hear more, see more? My team, Tony and I would love to talk to you more about this. How about providing a CMA, a comparable market analysis of the estimated after improved value? 
One of the keys to this program is what is the house going to be worth after we put $150,000 worth of improvements into the home? Is it going to be more valuable than when we purchase it and put in the improvements? If not, it's a crazy thing for us to do. But you as the realtor, now that you're looking for distressed property, you're looking for, well, what if the X amount of dollars were put into this property? What would it be worth in this neighborhood? And for those clients who say, you know what, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, I don't want to sell. I'd like to hold this. I want to be a, I want to be a landlord. How about providing with market rents for the properties that are being held, not sold? Some additional information on the Homestyle Investor Programs that the funds for down payment and closing costs may be gifted. Minimum credit score is 620. Total repair costs cannot exceed 75% of that after improved value. A non-occupant co-borrower is allowed. There will always be a 10% contingency reserve built into the loan amount. We're going to have extra money, so to speak, because we, if there's going to be a surprise, and typically there are surprises when we open up walls, you want to make sure that you've got extra money for that. Anything left over, if they don't need that extra 10% reserve, a leftover reserve will be applied to a principal reduction on the loan, or it can be used to do additional work. Also, the, there's going to be a homeowner contractor agreement that says that they will perform all the work per that uh, uh, work write-up form, and that it will uh, that'll do it for 200000 150000 So it's an agreement between the homeowner and the contractor, and it must be signed by the borrower and the general contractor. No more than four finance properties can be included in the application from the borrower. So what I'm saying here is if they have a single family resident, they can have a second home, which they're financing. But you know, here comes the third property, an investment property. It would all be allowed. It's when they have no more than four. So four is the max that they can have before they could not qualify for a home style loan. Lead-based paint certificate is required on all homes, we said prior to 1978. And if there's a mold or asbestos present, uh, there must be certifications that uh, that has been successfully removed from the property. Some additional information, the general contract and the consultant write-up, along with an architectural sketch is required in order to, to order an appraisal. Work must be started within 30 days after the closing, and there can be no lapse in the work for more than 30 days. You can't just stop working and walk away for three months. And the work must be completed within 12 months. Some contract tips, list the name of the borrower on the contract exactly as it appears in the pre-approval letter. Any changes, cross outs, alterations to the contract must be initialed by all parties. All credits, whether agreed upon in the contract or negotiated after the contract is signed, must be provided to the lender. An addendum must be signed by all parties that are required uh, a closing cost credit is allowed from seller to the buyer, but no other credits are allowed. So for example, if somebody said, well, I want to give you a repair credit. No, it, you know, the, the loan is a repair loan. So any type of repairs will get covered in the bid from the general contractor. But if they want to give a closing cost credit for the closing cost, the seller and the buyer can negotiate that. Uh, if the credits are not provided to the lender at least two weeks prior to the closing, they will not be allowed at the settlement on the closing date. Money orders are not acceptable for earnest money. And in the body of the contract, you must make sure that the correct type of financing is checked, that this is a conventional loan. So check the conventional loan box. However, you may also check the other box. And then you must include what type of other it is, that it is a Fannie Mae home style renovation loan. What kind of team do you need to assemble? Well, first off, you need a realtor, all of you on this call. You need to research and find properties that are older and in need of repair in your neighborhood and to provide an estimated once completed value of the home. If the client is holding the property, then the realtor should provide guidance as to the amount of rent the subject property will yield on a monthly basis. Second member of the team is the lender. First Centennial Mortgage, Tony Marino. He specializes in renovation loans. Third, you need a HUD consultant. That'll be provided by First Centennial Mortgage. We can refer you over 
to Cornerstone and few, a few others that we, we know are very, very good consultants. They'll prepare the specification of repair report with the required repairs in one column and the desired repairs in a second column. They'll have the blank bid repair report that's given to the general contractor to complete. And it breaks out each item that he's doing repairs on between materials and labor. The HUD consultant will also do the inspection of the property each time a draw request, a request for funds is made by the general contractor. Fourth member of the team, which must be provided by the borrower, is the general contractor. Fill out the blank, the, he'll fill out the blank bit of repair report. He'll perform all the necessary repairs to the subject property, and he must be selected by the borrower and validated by the lender. So let's take a look at an example of how the lender determines the borrower's loan amount. And what type of return on investment can they anticipate? This is where it gets to be kind of exciting, and this is where you should share some of this PowerPoint with some of your clients. So I made up an example. So let's assume you find a home that can be purchased for $249.9 in your neighborhood. And after consulting with you, the realtor, and a contractor, let's assume your client wants to put $175,000 worth of improvements to upgrade the home. Let's take a look at the loan available at 85% of purchase price plus the cost of improvements and how much cash is needed to be put into this transaction. So hopefully you can see this on your screen. This is what's called the Homestyle Max Mortgage Worksheet. So the first line says it's gonna be an 85% loan to purchase price. And we're saying that it's going to be an investment property. And on line B1, it says the purchase price is 249.9. And our wonderful realtor said, that if you put two, you buy 249.9, you put 175,000, it is reasonable to expect, no, realtors are not appraisers, it's reasonable to expect that after improvements, the house will be worth about 510. Great. There's some logic there. Then we're going to go into the alterations. The hard costs were 175,000. Remember, we said that we're going to reserve 10% of that as a contingency reserve. What happens if we open up the wall and all of a sudden there's additional work to be done inside that wall that we didn't anticipate? Well, we got another $17,500 of additional funds that we can draw upon for any cost overruns, let's call it. And again, remember, what happens if we don't use this? It'll just go to reduce the loan amount after we're done with all the fix up. There's the consultant's fee, $650 for, for, the, for the consultant. The inspections were $125 a piece times five. That was $625. Title updates, permits were $1,000 from the village. And last but not least, there's what's called $1,750. That's the origination fee that Fannie Mae charges. Uh, and it, it's one and a half percent. I'm sorry, it is 1% uh, of the hard cost of, of, of construction, 175. So last but not least, when you add up all these items in C, A1, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, it's 197,275 is our total alteration in cost of improvements. Keep that in mind, 197,000. So now for loan amount. Well, what was the total purchase price and improvement cost? Well, it was the 249.9, Right, we purchased the property for 249, and 197,000 and change was the total cost of repairs, or 447,175. Okay, the estimated once completed value is 510. The lower of the two is 447,175 times 85% is 380,098. So the customer is really getting. 85% of the purchase price, 85% of the fix-up cost. Cool. He's going to get $380,000. Again, so there's the purchase. There's the, the uh, re repairs. Uh, there's their estimated pre-paid items that you'll see in the settlement statement. The estimated closing costs. Um, there's the credit from the seller for the owner's title policy. And there's the loan amount. 
and it shows that the customer would bring on the green line has to bring 74,551 to closing. Now, some of your clients might have it in savings. Some may not. Remember what we said, their single family homes have had a run of about 40% in equity over the last two years. Maybe some of them already have a home equity line of credit. Might be a good conversation to have with them on a phone call. Then again, maybe they can only qualify for 50,000 in a home equity. Remember, it's free of charge. There's no closing costs. It doesn't cost them anything until they use it. So they can go out and get, either have or get a home equity line of credit, and they can use that for part of this $74,000. So now here's a short quiz. What did your client make in net profits upon sale after six months? Let's start with six months. We'll look at three months and then we'll look at home equity. Well, the sales price was 510. The realtor commissions at 5% were 25.5. They had to pay off the first mortgage after six months. It was down to 378. They, they have to provide a seller's, uh, the owner's policy protection letter, update, wire, state transfer to county, recording fees, they're gonna net $102,500. Okay, so what is the return on investment if the holding period is six months? So how much cash, you know, return on, is the return on what you put in the deal? What did our client put in the deal? Well, if he had the money, he put in 74,551. He also put in six months of mortgage payments or 15,173. He also put in six months of real estate taxes, six months of homeowner's insurance, and six months of private mortgage insurance. Grand total, he put in 93,741. Remember our net proceeds were 102,584. So what is the return on our money? Our money was 93,741 and it returned 102,584. Not like going to Vegas, but it's you put the money in, what do you get out? And when you annualize that return, it's 18.9% return. Not bad. You know, it's not, it's better than one, two percent in savings up to maybe a maximum of five percent in some money markets these days, but they should get a higher return than the one, two, or five percent. So again, what did the client make if the if the contractor is able to get the work done in three months. What this is gonna to show to us is that the shorter the time frame and the more that you commit the contractor to getting the work done sooner, the better the return on investment is for our client. So again, what happens when they sell it after three months? Well, they still sold it for 510. The realtor commission's the same. The payoff is a little bit higher because they haven't amortized it down beyond the first three months and all the title charges and protection letters and recording fees are all the same. So they netted 101,627. So let's remember that after three months. How much cash did our client invest in this property? Well, we said he needed 74,551 at the time of the purchase. He needed three months of, more, of principal and interest payments, three months of real estate taxes, three months of homeowners, three months of PMI, he put into the transaction 84,147. He netted out 101,627. Well, what is 101,627 as a percent of 84,147 annualized? It's an 83% return on, on money. I mean, I would love to do something like this on a regular basis. And so would your client. You do this with your client and you give them, again, 83%, say it took four months, so it goes down to 50%. I mean, you give them those types of returns on their money and they're gonna go, can we do this again? Can we do it again? And remember, you can only do one single family residence at a time under home style. So you do one, you fix it, you sell it, you do another one with them. So let's now take a look at another return on investment. If they said, I don't have, the $74,000 in my savings account for the 15% down. However, I do have equity in my home. My home value has gone up over 40% in the last two years. I have a $70,000 home equity line of credit. Okay, 
So what can we do with that? Well, let's first sell the property. So again, it's 510. It's uh, the realtor commission of 25.5. This is after three months. The first mortgage is paid off at 379. Look, I mean, look at these rates. 7% on, on, on the, are they going to be rate sensitive if they're making 18, 50%, 83% return on money? Heck no, they're not going to be sensitive to the interest rate. They're only holding it for three months. Again, here, look at paying off the home equity line of credit at 9%, nine. That's $70,000 that they, you know, that they're paying off, that they use for part of the down payment. They got the owner's policy, protection letter, you know, transfer taxes, recording fees. So the net sales proceeds is 31,627. Okay, let's remember that. So then what did our client invest in this property during this three month period? Well, first off, we needed 74,551, but you told me that he borrowed or opened or used his home equity line of credit of 70,000. So he didn't use his money, he used, a, he used a loan. So he only had to come up out of pocket for $4,551. He's smiling right now. I only had to come up with $4,500. And then he had to come up with three months of mortgage payments and three months of, of, the, of the HELOC interest only. You gotta remember on a HELOC, a home equity, it's interest only payments. He's not paying principal and interest. So this is three months of interest only payments. He had three months of real estate taxes, three months of homeowner's insurance, and he had three months of PMI. So the total cash invested is 15,722. And he got back 31,627. So what is his return on investment? It's actually, that's a, 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 a misprint. That's 104,000.7% annualized return. You can see here, if we doubled the 15,000, there would be another 15,000. We'd be almost up to the 31,000. So ignore the four. When I send out the PowerPoint, I'll change that to it's 104% return on investment. I'm telling you, if you can talk to your clients who either have home equities, can get home equities free of charge, it doesn't cost them anything. This client, after he sold this investment property, his home equity went back to zero. And it's not costing him anything to hold it at zero. And he gets 10 years of interest only on a home equity line of credit. I mean, it's a great opportunity for you realtors that are slow to start having conversations, start looking for fix up properties, for start calling your existing clients. Now you have a, now you have a reason to call them. Because if you're calling them to say, hey, would you like to move off of your 2% or 3% home mortgage, they're going to say, boy, did you call on a bad day? But if you're going to call to him and say, I, I, I want to go through with you the possibility I'm finding in my neighborhoods that I'm looking at, I'm finding up some properties that might be good fix-up properties, and they could produce 30, 40, 50, 100% return on investment. I'd like to go through some theoretical examples, and I'd like to bring to you some actual properties in my neighborhood and you go through that max mortgage worksheet with Tony and you go through this return on investment like I'm doing here and you show these to your client and maybe it gives them an idea that, you know, we, we know single family, we know how to maintain them. This may not be the world's worst thing that we were, would do. They might be thanking you again, not, it's not for everyone, but it gives you opportunities to call clients and see who is available for opportunities. So let's summarize. Higher mortgage rates have slowed the supply of primary homes available for purchase. So you're all a little slow. So higher mortgage rates have reduced the pool of elig eligible buyers. So you're a little slow. Real estate prices, however, continue to increase and provided existing clients with more equity in their primary residence also known as they can get a home equity line of credit. Your existing clients are familiar with maintaining a single family residence, so there's less reluctance to possibly buying one for investment. And with some education from the realtor and with Tony, who's on your team, perhaps some of your clients would like to invest in real estate for as little as 15% down. So what are your clients waiting for? What are you waiting for? 
Why aren't you taking some action? Now that you've reviewed how easy it is to become a real estate investor, what's your next step? Educate, educate, educate your existing clients. They know real estate. Educate them now on real estate investing. You don't have to be the best at this PowerPoint presentation, but you can be with Tony helping and assisting you and meeting with your clients or talking to them or even doing Zoom meetings like we're doing today. Why don't you do a Zoom meeting with your clients showing them the benefits of real estate investing? Show them the PowerPoint presentation. Provide monthly homebuyer seminars. You could do this same loan, even though we're talking investing today, you could do the same loan for people who are looking to buy a home, maybe less than what they, they, they can't afford the $500,000 home, but maybe they can afford a lesser home with, a, with the need of fix up and they can do the same home style loan. They can do, and again, it'll be at greater than 85, they can go all the way up to 95%, they go up to 97% if they have great credit, if it was a single family owner occupied residence. But why aren't you doing monthly homebuyer seminars? Your job, invite family, friends, past clients, children, past clients, family members, past clients, aunts, uncles, grandparents, to a seminar to learn either about down payment assistance or about how to buy and fix up a home. And then they got their dream home. So your goal today, is to get your clients pre-approved for free with Tony using FCM Express. Get a free credit report if they need credit help. If you found the property for fix up and they're not ready credit wise, Tony can do credit rescore, give them a, a roadmap toward fixing that credit. They have to assemble the necessary documentation for a full app, get automatic approval, get a pre-approval letter issued. Now that they have the yes, they can finalize the shopping that you started. You started looking, you're slow. You started using your time to become a valuable finder of older, outdated, rundown properties that could become somebody's dream home. And you can review an action plan with Tony. Start hosting home buyer seminars, either for first time home buyers or for existing who wanna buy and fix up or for those who want to become investors. Tony's team is committed to pre-approval in 24 hours, helping finance the you know, dream homes, investment properties. Here's Tony's contact information. By all means, take it down. He's at 847-804-1059, or you can reach him at t.marino at gofcm.com. We also recommend you go to your Play Store, your App Store, and download FCM Express. Tony can get it can get it uh, branded, FCM branded with your picture and your contact for information on your phone. So contact Tony and say, I want FC, FCM Express on my phone because you can share it and get people started on pre-approval immediately with a text. Any questions, comments, suggestions? See if anything's in the chat box. Do you know to get wholesalers? Do you know to get wholesalers? Um, again, many of the, if I understand the question, many of the uh, lenders, not again, not everybody is can do home style lending. That's you, you ought to be mindful of that. So again. Unless you're using Tony, Tony has access to lenders, wholesalers that are providing home style loans. So we do have multiple lenders that'll do home style lending. So I think that might answer your question. We do have the wholesalers, the lenders that do that. Um, will this PowerPoint presentation be shared? Uh, not only will it, the PowerPoint, not so much as uh, the recording will be, Melinda, we'll, we'll take this recording. And again, if you need the PowerPoint, if you wanna present it to people, uh, Tony will have it and be more than happy to do a Zoom meeting with any of your clients to show them you know, the requirements, uh, you know, focus on the return on investment, show them what they're gonna be out of pocket for. Um, Gabriella, great information, I have to leave, but thank you for the presentation. You're very, very welcome. 
Anyone else? Tony, when the consultant uh, goes to the inspected properties, is it up to five times the $650 or every time that he goes, there's a charge? That's a great question. No, the 650 is the to is the total, meaning time. It's 120, it's $125, Ronaldo, times five. Gotcha. So it's not 650 each time, it's $125 each time. And again, it depends upon the project. I mean, if, if you were doing, like in my example, if you're doing $175,000 of improvements, you might use four or five draws. But if you were doing, say, $25,000 repairs, you might do two draws. So the draw request, the, the general contractor will tell us, and in the bid package, he'll say, I only need two draws. I need the, the, the draw up front to get 50% of the materials going. And then I need, I'll be done with this 25, I'll be done in 30 days. He says, you can give me a draw, a second draw then. So then it's only two draws and you know, you're done. So it just depends upon how big of a repair project it is. Does that make sense? Yes, and you only need one bid or do you need two or three bids from uh, the general contractor? To approve? That's an, a great question. And if, any, if anybody's like me, Got to remember, it's a blank bid package that's being given to the borrower, and the borrower has to select it. If I were the if I were the customer, I would take the bid package, and I would send it out to maybe two or three contractors, right? And then you know, you're not necessarily always going to choose the lowest person because again, you want to. It, it's a personality thing. You you know you, you want to have conversation with them. You want to get a good feeling that this general contractor is someone that. You can trust to do the work. I mean, obviously you're gonna get references and all that, but the lender only cares about, who, who did you, we don't wanna look at all three of them. Who'd you finally pick? You can do three of them and pick one of the three and then turn that in as this is my contractor. And then we will send out then the contractor 1202 form such that he can give us his resume, his work experience, you know, how many years he's been, you know, then we'll, then, we'll, then we'll validate the contractor. But the bid package, um, it, the answer is as many as the borrower feels comfortable. If he wants to do one and done, great. If he wants to do two, he wants to do three and compare them and talk and then choose one of them, that's up to, that's up to the borrower. But if we just want the final bid package from whomever they choose. Does that make sense? Yes, and the scope of work is, is the forms that you have, or we have to find the scope of work so they could say uh, so much for the bedroom, so much for the bathroom. This is the cost of the kitchen or the outside. Is that the scope of work that you have a format, or that's something we have to get? Again, great question. I'll give you two answers. One is if the work is greater than $35,000, if the repairs are greater than $35,000, or it's structural. If you're moving a structural wall or doing a foundation crack or something, all that is structural. You have to hire then the 203AK consultant, which Tony will give, Tony Maria will give to the customer and to the realtor saying, here is, here's an, uh, an FHA 203K consultant. The consultant will put together the specifications of repairs. Remember, it's here, you have two columns. One is the required repairs, the mandatory repairs. And the second column will be the desired cosmetic repairs that the borrower would like, marble countertops and cabinetry. He'll give, he'll get, the consultant will come up with the form for the specifications and he will come up with the blank form to be given to the general contractor or contractors, plural, to do their bid package. So that's if it's over 35,000 or structural. Now, what if it's not over 35,000? It's not structural. You can, Tony, Tony has seen, um, he can give you an example from other, so then we're really just getting a bid from a general contract. And Tony can give you an example of what other general contractors have submitted. And you're like, you're saying, Ronaldo, uh, bedroom number one, um, you, you know, they're gonna be doing, uh, uh, a tray ceiling and uh, lighting fixtures and uh, recessed lighting. And so he's gonna have the bid broken out between materials for that bedroom and labor, the kitchen, 
you know, they're doing new flooring, they're doing uh, new countertops, new kitchen sink, uh, they're doing recessed lighting. It's going to have all the materials broken out and the labor associated with the install all broken out. But it's just going to be on the letterhead. Think of it is just on the letterhead of the general contractor, in which the you know he might say at the top of the letter, bid for Glen Marino's home at one two three Main Street, and he'll break each of the rooms down between material and labor and and submit it. So Tony can give you an an, uh, an example of of one, and then you can hand that over to, or again we he would give it also to the borrower and say, here realtor, here borrower, this is an example, have the general contractor fill it out like this. Great. I actually have a blank, I got a blank one that I'll send you, Ronaldo. Thank, thank you, yeah, and the last question, uh, the borrower, the mortgage has to be in the name of the borrower, or can they borrow against uh, an LLC or land trust or any other uh, liability company? It, it would have to be in their individual names now. I mean, when they when they finish construction, you know, if they want to quit claim deed it into an LLC. Now, again, remember what I'm saying to you is in violation of the mortgage. Uh -huh. But nine out of ten times, the lender doesn't know that it that the deed has been transferred. But it does say in the mortgage that if you deed the property with the risk that one takes by deeding it into an LLC or a sub S corp or something like that after closing right, is right. that if the lender were to find out, the lender can call the loan and then you would have to refinance and pay off that loan and get yourself a, a new loan. But no, to answer your question, it has to be in their individual names. All right, thank you. Great. Any other questions? If now, let's see, wait, I think we have one new message here. Ah, it's from Melinda. She says, thank you, awesome. You guys are awesome, you're wonderful. I, again, I always try to think, I always try, Tony and I try to put ourselves in the shoes of a realtor. And we go, if it's slow, if high rates are causing less activity, what better way to do it than to say, would you guys like to show your existing clients? We're not asking them to give up the two or 3% mortgage, we're asking them, hey, would you like to maybe invest in a single family residence? And not everybody's going to say yes, but you've got some now good tools and resources to show them return on investment, to show them how easy it can be done. And possibly you're going to get some customers to say, let's move forward. Let's go to the next step. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. You've been great. And uh, we'll be getting this recording out to everybody in the next couple of days. And uh, by all means, please contact Tony. Um, Tony is um, uh, available at uh, area code 847. Let me just get this down here. Tony can be reached at 847-804-1059 and uh, t.marino at gofcm.com. I think I saw one more. Uh, yeah, it seems that up. Lori gave you something, Lori Foley. Yeah, I'm trying to get back to use the chat box. Let's see what Lori had to say. Then this wouldn't work if they were a group of investors, must be under one person's name. Um, unless the group of investors want, you know, it could be Glenn Marino, Tony Marino, Lori Foley. I mean, it, we can go as individual names. So it, it doesn't have to be a singular borrower, but it has to be singular names. It can't be the Glenn Marino LLC and the Tony Marino Subchapter S Corporation. Great. All right, guys, you've been wonderful. We look forward to bringing you some more great news. Let us know how you're doing with this. Tony's going to follow up and see how you guys are doing, if this is uh, something that uh, is beneficial. You guys have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.